guys, Grace Game here and welcome back to the channel and for today's video we are back in Genshin and as you can see um, when I got here I promise you guys it literally took me straight to the deja vu events again so yeah we're still in deja vu. Um, Before we get started on this quest and try to figure out why we're in deja vu I might have to look it up as well just to make sure I'm getting the right answers so that way I can get out of this deja vu because anybody got time for that but as you can see something different um I have sinned <laughs> and I went into the wish and I got some people and one of them was one character that I was talking about I always wanted besides Shen he, um was Ning Wong because I've played her and I was like oh my gosh she is so good you see she's now she's number four um yeah I got her up to level 40 and um yeah I have sinned now I want more characters and I did get more characters so let me show you what happened okay y'all I did grab some more characters besides Ning Wong she's right here I got Layla um which I kind of heard she's actually really good she she she's just under level and I was like like she's not under level but like underrated that's the word that's the word um I don't know if I'm gonna use Yao Yao because I've heard Yao Yao is um I mean she I mean she's a cutie and she has cute bunnies but I like Kale better because I got in Kale up to level 56 so that's good um only thing about when it comes to geo characters is something that I gotta show y'all what my problem is and that is grabbing these y'all this geo thing is really really hard to defeat I have never I mean I've never had to take so long and try to defeat a boss than this character it's like it's so hard to fight this person and it's like from what I read and what I watched on videos they were like once you kind of get them down like once you get the the enemy down it's like you have to hit all these pillars in front of you at once and I'm like how do you do that and I'm thinking because some of my elemental masteries don't come quickly so I don't know it it's it's a lot but I'm gonna see if I can do it or I'm gonna see if I can like find some people to help me out with this because this one takes so long the other ones I've done fine in I've done fine in the rest of them like I've done okay with the Electro um Amio I've done okay I've done okay with Cairo I even defeated this one the ocean it oh my gosh just grab you some arrow peoples and you'll be fine. I've done the pyro, prima, I, I've done them all. So like I've been okay with this one y'all. Wow, dang it. It's really hard. So I'm gonna need some help. I'm gonna have to get some pointers or find some more friends to see if they can help me out with this because this character is really, really, really hard to defeat. And I don't know why it's just hard, but let's get back into the video. I'm gonna make sure I turn on the volume and everything because yeah, I'm sorry. It's just quiet right now. Let's hear some Genshin music. <laughs> So we're heading back to the deja vu again. I'll see y'all when I get there. Good morning, Junior Zard. Sorry to keep you waiting. Not at all. I arrived early. Huh? Paimon thinks you sound kind of tired. Did you not get enough sleep? I'm doing well. There's no need to worry. Shall we go? Let's start with the stalls over there. She sounds extremely tired, you guys, and I'm getting worried she might die. <laughs> and I'm going to be really sad. Great idea. Let's get going, traveler. Feels all too familiar. I think it's gonna repeat itself for me to where we meet um na uh, Naj yet again. To Miss Junior Zod's sponsorship that the children can enjoy the Sub Zero's festival. Oh, are you interested in Yalda candies? I have some boxes of candy here. Pick whichever one you want. Hmm, not much of a choice. All these boxes look the same. <laughs> it's not that simple. Each box contains a random flavor. It's up to the luck of the draw. Flavors include lavender melon, hara fruit. Sunsetia. Mmm, they all sound pretty tasty. And there's also Lizard Tail and Oni Kabuto. Huh? What were those last two? She'll help me choose. Paima wants to eat the Sunsetia flavor. No problem. These boxes of candy are numbered one to five from left to right. Which one do you want? Number four. <laughs> oh, -ho, I like your confidence. No hesitation at all. Congratulations! Number four is indeed Sunsetia. <laughs> Paimon knew she always had incredible luck. Yep. Um, Paimon's not really interested in the other flavors. Oh, uh, wait, how did you know? Don't tell- What? She was right about all of them? Yep, I was. That couldn't have been luck. How, how is this possible? I packed all those boxes this morning and they've been sealed ever since. You couldn't have known beforehand. 
Nope. Mind reading? X-ray vision? Or some kind of magic trick? This is way too freaky. Tell us what's going on. Since when did you get superpowers? Traveler? Yep, this is, yep, yep. It took me back. It took me back. Just now. That hey, one. where are you going? What's going on? Did you see something? Us leaving Dunyar's side without letting her know is kind of rude, you know. Yeah, it's repeating it for us to where we got the- that way we got it right, so... It's redoing it for us. I got the video up, you guys. Cause I'm about to watch it so I can make sure I got him- I got him correctly because I'm like, oh, Josh. Oh, gosh. I messed up. I almost said Josh. Who is Josh? I don't know a Josh. I mean, I know a Josh, but not really. Yeah, it- it-, it okay, so this is a repeat from last episode because I missed the questions. Familiar figure and overwhelming sense of deja vu. Deja vu. Again. That's... And the bird is gone from its cage. And this is where we meet Navia. I said Nahia. Nahida. This is where we meet her. All right. Doesn't say anything. Look, that's... Isn't that Dunyarzad? Yep. What's happening here? Why are there two Dunyarzads? Mm-hmm. You already know that this isn't your first sub -Zero's festival, don't you? I'm sure you already know how to use this. Yep. A knowledge capsule? Where did you get it? What's inside? You should use it too, Paimon. Uh, you, you know Paimon? Well, this seems kinda sketchy, but Paimon feels like this is what we should do. Let's use it. It keeps repeating over and over. What the? Yeah, memories. So many days worth of memories. This is our 20th time at the Sub Zero's festival? Huh? No. 30th? 40th? Just how many times have we been to the Sub Zero's festival? I hate to say a hundred, but I feel it. <laughs> have we been trapped in a single day? If it weren't for you, we wouldn't have even realized. I love her eyes. What the heck was inside that knowledge capsule? Hmm. Your memories are still scrambled? Try your best to remember. This isn't the first time we've met, and I answered that question a long time ago. Uh, let Paimon think. Oh, it's coming back. Meeting you was the real catalyst for restoring our memories, and the knowledge capsule was just your means of showing our minds the way. Uh, what about everyone else? Why are you only helping the two of us? Your sense of deja vu is stronger than everyone else's, yes? Yeah. As for an explanation, you two received the blessing of Dendro, and you also have special, sensitive constitutions. It was as if a single sheet of paper was separating those memories from your consciousness. Or dinners are. A familiar question. I think this is the seventh time you asked that. As you can see, she isn't doing well. You probably sensed it too. The Dunyarzad you were just with is different from the first Dunyarzad you met. That first Dunyarzad is in front of you right now, and she doesn't have a lot of time left. Hmm. What I need to, what I need to do now is... <laughs> Looks like you're almost done sorting out your brain. Yep. Oh yeah, I'm Nahida. Hey Nahida. I know, you introduced yourself Good. before. You passed the test. What's happening? You can awaken our memories, and you seem like you know what's going on. Oh, wait. Please don't tell Paimon even you don't know. Everything in this world runs in a loop. Mm -hmm. This cycle is called a samsara. You, me, and everyone else are all stuck inside a one-day samsara. As for the truth, that's on you to find out. If you were told the truth instead of discovering it yourselves, it would literally blow your mind. Okay. I don't know how you'd be after that. I can only give you surface level help, like bits of information and subtle hints. For the rest of the time, I'll be doing all I can to slow down Dunyarzad's illness. Good to know, good she to know. She looks like she isn't doing well at all. Her illness gets worse after each sub Zero's festival. If we can break out of the samsara, I might be able to save her. But okay. as things are right now, she's just a small bird in the sky that's about to lose its last feathers. All I can do is raise a gale to delay her fall. Okay. You sure love to use weird analogies. <laughs> analogies are wonderful tools. They let you use existing knowledge to understand unfamiliar things. 
Okay, so, with what you know so far, what do you think the truth is? Alright, so this is where we go into our mind mode. <laughs> When you enter the state of completion, you can choose any text entry to interpret it. The, this, this interpretation process involves analysts of the text entry and may yield new entries. Once interpreted, you may submit that text as a conclusion. Some text entries can be associated with one another once interpreted. Select associate to choose the other text entry, then select trigger association. You can gain new text entries by performing accurate associations. If one of the text entries on the current page can be used as a conclusion, then select that entry before choosing submit conclusion. All right, so we're gonna be looking at this for a minute because I'm gonna be watching the video at the same time because I need to make sure I'm getting the right answer because I don't I don't want to be a part of this deja vu again right now. All right, all right, so first one. We've already experienced the sub Zerus festival many times and the day of the festival seems to be in a Perpetual samsara. What's happening right now seems to have happened before. This feeling has been getting stronger and stronger. Okay. We've already experienced the sub festival many times, and the day of the festival seems to be in a perpetual samsara. <sighs> that should be it. Flow of time is endlessly cycling within one single day. A time loop. <sighs> You've given similarly still the wrong answer? Paimon thought that made a lot of sense. A simple time loop can't explain some of the phenomena. You two are still missing a lot of information. <coughs> I must be through it again. Junior is odd. The sub Festival is happening every day, but that doesn't mean we can waste an infinite amount of them. Hurry and find the truth before today's festival ends. All right, so it may take us back again. It's where we have to redo it again, so... One more time, y'all. Let's think about our current situation. To save Dunyarzad, we have to escape the samsara of the sub Festival. And to do that, we need to figure out what's happening. Nahida rejected the idea of a time loop, so we must have missed something. Rock Paimon's memories say that we've already done this many times, but let's go talk to people again. It's more productive than sitting here and scratching our heads. Why don't we start with those stall owners? Okay, now it says ask around for clues. So I think that's what we're gonna do is ask around for clues. So hopefully this helps because it's not time loop, but it makes no sense. Because in the video it said about time loops being the correct answer. And then um, Dea showed up. So it's like, let me grab these real quick. You never know, girl, we're gonna need them. All right, here we go. Hey there. Hey, it's you guys again. Where's your cultured friend? She Feeling a little unwell. I see. Did you come back to buy something? I guarantee the freshness of my products. I harvested them from the forest just yesterday. Have you felt anything strange lately? Do you ever feel like you're reliving the same day? Huh? What brought this about? I hurried back from the forest yesterday and I'm selling protos here today. I haven't felt anything strange. Hmm. Um, to put it another way, if you really really think about it was yesterday truly yesterday did you actually come back from the forest yesterday what kind of philosophical nonsense is this are you two daydreaming didn't you know I that wish. no one dreams in sumeru go somewhere else if you want to find someone to daydream with <laughs> okay uh, he actually has a point is this a dream is everyone dreaming hmm true it's so weird that people here don't dream why is that anyway if this all really were just a dream we would have woken up a long time ago let's keep asking around okay that guy said no one dreams of samaru and i remember junior's art saying that exact same thing so talk to him next oh it's you two was my divination so accurate that you felt compelled to compliment me in person? We actually did run into a situation, but I'm not sure if it's related to your divin- Ooh, I knew it! I told you, the god's divination is highly accurate. You just hadn't fully understood its significance yet. <laughs> You're really excited about this, huh? That's exactly why we came back. Help us better understand it! Uh help you better understand it oh gosh w well <laughs> that isn't exactly what i excel at he's not gonna help us so you're admitting that you don't have a clue 
Anyway, what kind of situation did you get into? Okay, we're all trapped in a day of the Severus Festival. You've actually divined our fortune many, many times. Huh? Uh, hold on a second. I thought you guys just lost your wallet or, or fell for a scam. No, we are in this deja vu crap. <laughs> what you just said, are you serious? Does that kind of thing actually happen in real life? Oh gosh, he doesn't know either. I knew you weren't going to believe it. Marvelous. Truly marvelous. I believe you. Recall the interpretation of your divination. The moon, illusions, and lies. It really felt like an omen. Hey, moon, illusion, and lies. When you say it like that, the divination does sound like it's related to what's going on. Can you read any more into it? I believe that the Archon's revelations are never more than vague hints. Anything more specific is beyond the reach of mere mortals. The book only says, if you trust your instincts and overcome your fears, the sun will surely rise. So that's how it is. Okay. Like fortune telling is just fortune telling. It's no good for practical problems. We haven't made any progress. Who else can we talk to? Hmm, let's go talk to, uh, to Dia. Remembers that we tried talking to her a couple of times, but she always thinks we're playing pranks on her. You think she'll brush us off again? She cares a lot about Junior's art. Let's try talking to her to see the real Junior's art. Okay. Let's see what happens when that happens. Yeah. If we tap into Dia's strong sense of responsibility as a mercenary, then she'll definitely take us seriously. Yeah, let's take her to Junior's art. Mm. At this time of day, Dia's probably just finished beating up those kidnappers. Let's go find her. Let's do that. All right, I'll meet you guys when we get there. Okay, we made it. That was I'm quick. Fine, my lady. It's just a scratch. Perfect timing. Both of you are here. Paimon, traveler, you came at just the right time. Listen, there was a dangerous get. Huh? You saw? Then why didn't you jump in earlier? If someone was protecting Miss Dunier's odd, I could have went all out. <sighs> anyway, can you do something for me? You want the traveler to take Dunier's odd somewhere to rest? Well, you check to see if there's still any kidnappers around. Did Paimon get that right? How did you know what I was going to say? <laughs> That'd be so weird. We need to say something convincing. All right. All right. Let's do it. So this one. All right. So I think it. They said it was this one. Dia sold her greatsword to raise additional funds, and then she was injured because she wasn't used to her new weapon. Tell her, traveler. All right. Uh, yep. I didn't tell anyone about that, including Miss Dunyarzad. You couldn't have known. And just now, you literally took the words right out of my mouth. What's going on? All right, so this is the situation. Tell him. A lot happening. <laughs> it's kind of hard to believe what you just told me. First, let me make something clear. Most of us desert dwellers might not be the scholarly type, but we do have basic common sense. Have you noticed something off with Dunyarzad? Oh, Quieter than usual, uninterested in anything, and really gloomy. Yeah, she isn't the same as before, but her parents said that this is how she was like at first. Huh? At first? I don't quite understand what you're all talking about. I'll go rest on the bench over there. We gotta take Dia to see the real Dia's are. Are you angry? Come with me, I'll show you some evidence. All right, I'll give you the benefit of the doubt since you knew about my greatsword. Let's make this a quick trip. Miss Junior's art isn't completely safe here. She's gonna be real surprised when she sees the real Junior's art. <laughs> all right, let's go there. See y'all when we get there. It's like we have to show her everything before the day ends of the festival. So here we go. Nahida, we brought a friend. Are you busy? I thought I told you that it won't help to bring anyone here. We just wanted her to see the real Junior's art's condition. The real Dunyarzad? Uh, where and who are you talking to? Huh? <sighs> I told you that you two are special. Other people can't see me or Miss Dunyarzad here. Oh no. Hold on. Over there. Is that? Wow. How perceptive. Does she have invisible antennae? <laughs> Miss Dunyarzad, she's, she's lying down here, isn't she? How's she doing? Her condition's really bad, and she's basically in a coma. How did you know she was here? Wow, this is getting intense. I can sense her aura. I, there are also lingering feelings of something like regret or 
disappointment. What happened? Do you believe us now? The Sub-Zero's festival has been repeating itself. Yep. Begin to discuss the issue with Dia. So, you think the sages are behind this? What? Yeah. They've always been against us. Wouldn't surprise me if they're using the Akasha to intentionally repeat the Sub-Zero's festival as a sick joke. Ooh. Mm. You have a point. Aside from the Dendro Archon, the Academia Sages are the only ones in Sumeru who could pull off something like this. Maybe there's more to the Akasha than we know. True. Nahida, can you tell us something about the Akasha? Right! Didn't you awaken our memories using something that looked like a knowledge capsule? That means you must know something about the Akasha! The Akasha relies on the power of a Gnosis to operate, as it is the manifestation of the God of Wisdom's power. It compiles mm. the wisdom of the entire populace, and it grants knowledge to the people. A Gnosis could do that? No wonder the Akasha is so magical. It's being powered by the Gnosis of Sumeru's Archon. So, uh, this Nahida you mentioned, what did she say? She said, and Paimon quotes, the Akasha relies on the power of a Gnosis to operate, as it is the manifestation of the God of Wisdom's power. It compiles the wisdom of the entire populace, and it grants knowledge to the people. Good job, Paimon. It compiles the wisdom of the entire populace and grants knowledge to the people. Mm, wait. What's up? What happened? I get the grants knowledge part. That's what people have always used the Akasha for, but compiling the entire populace's wisdom? How does that work? Did she mean that the sages enter new knowledge into the Akasha? Oh, yeah. That sounds about right. Doing what good. Do I'm doing good. Okay, this is, this must be the second one. No, the third one. This is the third one. All right. My mind feels exhausted even though I haven't done too much thinking. What is going on? You mean the Akasha is causing our mental fatigue? Huh. Now that I think about it, my head's been feeling unusually heavy. Hmm. When the desert dwellers set off on their quest for knowledge, a sage once said, knowledge always comes at a price. Okay. Compiling the entire country's knowledge. You think the Akasha pulled a 180 and is extracting information from us? How? But how would it, how would it do that? Who knows? The Akasha can put knowledge into our heads, so... Who's to say that it can't also poke around in there? We don't know any specifics. What's the point of doing something like that? Just think about it. If you could combine the knowledge of every single person in Sumeru, then you can basically turn Sumeru City into a single massive brain. Oh. This hive mind could make breakthroughs and problems that even the smartest geniuses can't crack. An excellent deduction. And the analogy comparing Sumeru City to a massive brain? <sighs> I love it. I love Nahida. She is so cute. In that case, we should take off our Akasha terminals right away. Maybe that'll solve this problem. It's worth a shot. Yeah, I was only wearing this for show in the first place. Didn't expect the sages to cook up such a conspiracy. <sighs> Mark my words. When this is over, I'm getting evidence and exposing this whole thing to the public. So pretty much, the Sumeru iPods are taking over. We all remove it. How does everyone feel? Actually, I also noticed something else. Huh? What is it? Oh, that! Paimon knows what you're talking about! It's a single soft beep that sounds like it's coming from the Akasha terminal! The sound of a beep? Could it be a prompt tone for when the Akasha is operating? Hmm, I heard the same sound. That's probably an important clue. We weren't using our terminals, but we heard a beep anyway. Okay. Heard it again! Traveler! Did you hear that? Yes. I heard it too. Our ears aren't messing with us. There was definitely a beep, but it sounded like it was coming from inside my head. We took off our Akasha terminals. No, it's happening again. No! Phase runtime has exceeded its expected length. At this rate, there may be casualties. But we cannot lose all of our progress. No. Oh, but this time we're next to Nahida. Paimon remembers everything! Yes! <laughs> Good. You adapted quickly this time. We definitely night. took off our Akasha terminals last night, but we still heard that beep. Why is that? We've been implanted with another form of the terminals. We feel... <sighs> but now we 
we can at least confirm one thing. Yeah. Kasha definitely has something to do with whatever's trapping us in this cycle. Oh, Paimon doesn't get it. Why would the Akasha go this far if all it wants is everybody's wisdom? It's extremely difficult for lab rats in an experiment to understand why they're being treated the way they are. If we're lab rats, then what are you? Nahida, you've never told us anything about yourself. I think she's the I think she's the um the goddess of Samaru. <laughs> hmm. I guess I'm the moon. The moon? Wasn't that the result of our divination? Yes. Anyway, knowing who I am won't help you get closer to the truth. So you should focus on other things. Don't get distracted and miss any clues. <sighs> okay, okay then. Dia helped us a lot yesterday, so let's go find her. If Paimon's reading the time correctly, those kidnappers should be showing up soon. Okay. Right. Hopefully it just takes us there. Ah, there you are. I've already taken care of those kidnappers. My lady, did you get hurt? Hold on, something's not right. Dia! Her arm! What's wrong? Why are you both gawking at me like that? <gasps> you, you didn't get hurt this time. Huh? What do you mean this time? Why are you so surprised that I managed to get out unscathed? Those kids were amateurs. Oh, no, 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 no. Shh. How did you know about my greatsword? I haven't told anyone about it. Yeah, we gotta do Please, it. Don't tell Miss Dunier Zad. So Tia's lost her memories after all. During your battle. Did anything feel anything strange? strange? You already know that I got a new greatsword. Hmm. If I had to say something, it's weird how such a new weapon could feel so familiar. Because it didn't do that at first. It's as if I've already used it to fight a countless number of battles. Yeah, you did. You're saying that although you don't remember using it, your body feels like it does? That's right. Both mercenaries and warriors heavily rely on muscle memory. Only knowing the theory of battle won't get you anywhere. Traveler, what do you think? Could it be because we've removed our Tosh terminals? It's never happened before. Yeah. Hyman's feeling really hopeful. I'm doing really good. Is it possible that we've already broken free? Oh, you're right. Earlier in the Samsara, something like this would have never happened. True. We'll know for sure at the end of the day. I have no clue what you two are talking about, but it's still dangerous here, so... So you yeah, yeah, yeah. take Dunyar's odd somewhere else to rest while you check if there are still more kidnappers around, right? Yep. How did you know what I was going to say? Can you read minds? Uh, uh, forget it. Go and do your thing. Yeah, something's... Yeah, something different changed now. Something is happening for real. Hopefully this deja vu is almost <sighs> over. It's finally night time. Aside from Dia not getting injured, everything seems to have stayed the same. Listen, Nahida, we found out that Dia got out just fine today, even though she got injured every other time she fought the kidnappers. Do you think the samsara has been broken? Have we saved Dunyarzad? Really? Good job on all that progress. Get some good sleep tonight. Hey, what kind of an answer is that? Tomorrow will come. Everyone assumes this is common knowledge, but the only way you can know that for sure is if you experience tomorrow. Okay. How many todays has it been? Is it possible that today will be followed by yesterday? Does tomorrow truly exist as anything beyond a made-up concept? It's even possible that this entire world is a lie, and the history of the whole world has just been one endless sub zeros festival. Okay, okay, no more! Hyman's brain is already shut down! <laughs> That's why it makes no sense to waste your energy thinking about things you will learn tomorrow. Get some good rest. You know, use the bathroom and flush your anxiety dookie away. Uh, huh? Hold on, what did you just say? Did Paimon hear you correctly? Huh? <laughs> People always say they feel a sense of relief after they take a duke duke. That's why I suggested you could try that. Oh my god. Is that so strange? Oh, I can't. Uh, it's so strange and so against common sense that Paimon's at a loss for words. You were sounding kind of smart just a minute ago. Grant takes. We're gonna get some rest. Yeah, even though it's happy and lively at the Sub Zero's festival every day, it feels like it's been a long time since we've really gotten to relax. Uh, let's go back to our room. But Nahida had a bed right next to Junior's art. Oh no. Continue the harvest. Compared to what we stand to achieve, 
These sacrifices are trivial. What? We're still in the same day. As expected, it's not as simple as we thought. Nahida, you already knew last night that we didn't break out of the Simsara? Why didn't you tell us? <laughs> Would there have been a point? You would have spent the night with new worries, with tomorrow still out of reach. In that case, you might as well rest within that brief moment of hope. An opportunity like that doesn't come by often. True. I thought it might help you clear your minds. I'm a that the Duke Duke did that! Oh, whatever. Guess you were looking out for us after all. <laughs> of course. In the time we've been together, you two have been everything to me. Aw, we're uh, buddies. Paimon's flattered and everything, but maybe you're taking things a little fast. <laughs> Hush, Paimon. She's just being our friend. <laughs> what I mean is, even though I had asked you to solve this puzzle, you two are still the only ones who can see me and sense my presence. True. In other words, if you weren't here, I may as well not exist. Aww. That's why you two have been everything to me. Get it? Nahida's talking about confusing stuff again. Anyway, that's enough chit-chat. So, Traveler, did the new clues yesterday help you gain a new understanding of the situation? True. The time loop theory is indeed incorrect. Huh? Why are you scrapping your previous theory? The f f fighting skills have been improving. It has also gotten worse. Oh, yeah. You're right. Gosh, how did we not notice that? In a simple time loop, people's physical conditions should also reset right so what's your new hypothesis all right mercenaries rely heavily on muscle memory and dia was able to use her experiences to avoid injury in later samsara cycles true associate with the beef is a prompt tone for akasha operations we still hear it every night even though we removed our akasha terminals if all our memories of a day are erased at the end of that day, then we would unwittingly relive that same day again and again. Mm. See what happens. Oh! Then the beep we hear every night could just be indicating the deletion of our memories! True. That's why when we wake up, everyone thinks the sub festival hasn't happened yet! It's already the next day, but everyone still thinks it's the day before! But muscle memory can't be erased! That's why Dia has been getting better at using her great sword. Now everything makes sense. Hmm, a brilliant deduction. Yay! Nahida, tell us if we're right or wrong. To put it simply, it's as if you've mistaken a pyro crystal fly for a firefly in the night. You lost sight of its true nature because you focus too much on your perception that it glows. That isn't simple at all. Still the wrong conclusion, huh? Why don't you go talk to Miss Dia again? You might learn something new. Okay. Right. She did help us find our latest clue after all. Let's go! Alright, so we're making progress, you guys. Making some progress. I'll see y'all when, when we catch up with Dia. Right, we made it. Let's talk to Dia. There you are. Really took me a while to find you. As expected, Dia also didn't get hurt today. Get hurt? Why would I? Don't underestimate me. Well, you're still getting used to your new greatsword. Huh. Truth be told, I also think it's pretty strange. It just suddenly felt so familiar in my hands and... Uh, wait a second! How did you know I got a new greatsword to begin with? I didn't tell anyone about it. Traveler, could you explain the situation to her today? Paimon's gotten a little sick of doing it. Let's just get straight to the point. Oh, that works! Yeah, let's just do that. You suddenly became... <laughs> yeah, he's... We've lived through this thing. What happened to you guys while I was gone? Did you get brainwashed by some cult? Um, don't think too hard about it. Just take what we're saying at face value. All right, then. Let me get this straight. You're telling me that my body's already gotten used to this great sword, but my brain just doesn't remember it? Yep. Yes, your memory's being erased every day. Then I'd have to disagree. That's impossible. Oh? Why do you think that? If we've actually been reliving the Subzerus Festival day after day, then what happened to the things we used? The money we spent, the food we ate? Common sense says my wallet should have emptied itself a long time ago. There's no True. way I wouldn't have noticed that. I've thought about that too. But if the sages were behind this, if they utilized the entire city resources as well as information supplied by... 
Right. They could yep. use the Akasha to record what everyone did that day, and then use the city's resources to replenish everything. It's not very likely, but it's also not impossible. No, it is impossible. I've got proof. You have proof? Where? <sighs> you two are surprisingly serious about this nonsensical discussion. Fine, I'll play along for a little longer. Come with me, Miss Dunyarzad. Please come along as well. I still can't guarantee that this area is safe. Okay, so things are acting differently now. I can't believe it's Dia who wants to show us something this time. Two days ago, we were the ones taking her to see Dunyarzad. All right, I'll see y'all when we get there. All right, we made it with Dia. This is it. Uh huh. This is a wooden training dummy. What about it? See those marks on the dummy? Those are the result of several days worth of practice. Let's say the sages didn't replace it every day. Shouldn't it be hacked to pieces by now? That's true. But what if they did? Then the sages would have had to reproduce every mark I left during previous training sessions. I'm a professional fighter. My martial school has always emphasized the importance of refined control. The force, angle, and entry point of each strike is calculated and deliberate. That's why I remember every mark on the dummy, as well as my state of mind as I made each strike. Hmm. It's just as they say, each swordsman has their own unique style. And even the same swordsman can't make the same cut twice. It would be impossible to copy these marks. Is it really impossible? <gasps> what if they use some fancy machine to carve every single mark? People often say that a camera's photo can never replace an artist's painting because the former has no spirit to it. Okay. The same thing applies here. At a mere glance, I can differentiate carved marks from the results of combat training. Seems we'll have to abandon this theory. Whew. I hope that cleared things up for you. Hey, is this that new brain exercise game that's been super popular with the scholars lately? It's surprisingly fun. Anyway, it's getting late. I should escort Miss Dunyarzad to Nilu's stage. See you later. Something's off. Well, back to square one. Is our memory deletion theory also wrong? <sighs> But at least we've reached some other conclusions in the meantime. Yep, that's true. So, can we think of any new ideas right now? Strange? Paimon feels like everything's been strange lately. I can't, we never thought about leaving the city. Huh? Leaving the true. city? True. You're right. It's really strange how we never thought of such a simple solution. Many things should become clear if we can confirm the flow of time outside of the city. Paimon can't believe did we miss this because we're tunnel visioning too hard on our other theories? Or because we're just too tired? How about we go back and ask Nahida? Maybe we've forgotten something about leaving the city. True. The Zim can also figure out how, you know, things transpired. I'll see y'all when we get there. All right, we're here. Nahida, we're back! You're back early today. Did you find something new? Sort of. We're mostly sure now that we're not in a time loop. And we also aren't in the real world. But at the same time, we have a new question. Hmm, leaving the city. As far as I remember, you've mentioned your plans to do that twice before. Really? But we don't remember anything. What happened after we talked about those plans? What did we say when we got back? <sighs> Let me think. I don't think you ever actually told me what the outcome was. Oh, it's probably more accurate to say that both times, you never came back the whole night. But you two sometimes stay out the entire night anyway, so at the time, I didn't think too much about it. Okay. It is true that sometimes we lose track of time during our investigations. Before we know it, it'll already be the next day. But still, neither of us remember anything about leaving town. Really? That's kind of strange. In theory, I should have already awakened all your memories. Right. Yep. Something here is definitely fishy. Let's get to the bottom of this tomorrow. All right, let's try. Our memories are back! Uh, about that. Well, where should Paimon begin? What are you talking about? Traveler, aside from your memories that were just restored, I have another message for you. Listen to it and you'll understand. Okay. I can't go back. There are countless spaces here. Our Sub-Zerus Festival in Sumeru City is just one of them. This is my Traveler, voice. Traveler, you should be missing two days worth of memories. Paimon will fill you in. Okay, two days ago. It's time to carry out our plan from yesterday. Okay, let's go. Okay, let's go try and leave the city. Empty illusions. 
All right, let's do this. Let's try leaving the city. It's like I'm reliving it. This is really cool. Why can't we leave the city? What is the academia up to now? Don't ask me. It's not like I can tell you anything. This is a direct order from the Grand Sage. Just wait until tomorrow. But there is no tomorrow. I have a real emergency. My goods have already arrived at Port Ormos. If I don't hurry, they'll be stolen. That's your problem. Make sure you make a request in advance next time. But, but it's not like you can just predict business matters in advance. <laughs> okay. It looks like the Academia already announced a lockdown for Sumeru City today. How completely unsurprising. Let's go and question them. Hello, sir. Why can't we leave the city today? Here we go again. Don't ask me. I don't know either. We just received an order that no one is allowed to enter or exit Sumeru today. They didn't tell us anything else. So the Academia doesn't trust you at all. Of course he was. <laughs> Angering me won't get you anywhere. If I had that kind of insider info, I would have left this stupid post long ago. Huh. It looks like he really doesn't know. If we can't get anything out of him, let's take matters into our own hands. Why don't we climb over the walls? Those guards can't be everywhere at once. This is a good spot, and the guard hasn't noticed us at all. Let's hurry! Paimon, huh? stay here. Why? Are you going to leave Paimon behind? We need someone to stay and witness events from th from this side. Even the city might trigger disruptions to our memories. But what if things get really weird out there and you get into some trouble? Then Paimon won't be able to help you. Oh, Paimon knows that Paimon can't do much, but we've always been together, haven't we? Mm. Don't worry. Okay, Paimon will wait for you. Promise Paimon that you'll come back as soon as possible. Just a quick look. Okay, and okay. please, be careful. Oh, memories! Traveler! <laughs> what just happened? Paimon thought Paimon would never see you again. You, you just disappeared. Paimon waited for you for hours and hours at the city wall and you never came back. You promised Paimon that you were only taking a Paimon, calm down. She's here now. I don't think she understood what you were saying. <laughs> Paimon doesn't care. Paimon wanted to go look for you, but you also said that Paimon should stay. Paimon was so worried and so scared the entire day. <gasps> okay. Yeah, Paimon this is crazy. You. The most important thing is that you didn't actually disappear. Oh, Paimon was so scared that you had gone into another world. Okay, Paimon, can you tell us your perspective of what really happened yesterday? Tama describes your plan from yesterday. Hmm, I see. Using two people's different perspectives. After that, you left the city. Paimon kept her eyes on you the whole time, but then you disappeared in an instant. You sure that's what you saw? I wonder. No way! Paimon was watching you with the fullest attention! What's your perspective, Traveler? You sure you don't have any memory of this? I don't even know what that yesterday existed. Wow, I gosh! Guess that explains everything. You also lost your memories the last two times you tried to leave the city. Those days' memories can't be awoken. So, if we leave the city, our memories will be completely erased? So they didn't just restrict access to Sumeru. They also erased the memories. Wow. It really sounds like something big outside of the city is being hidden on purpose. But this way, we'll also never discover what's outside. If our memories will be erased. Something like a message? But how can we send it back? I don't know. Don't, I don't. don't look at me like that. I'm, I'm not used to being stared at. Well, okay, okay. You want something that can pass on messages, right? Give me some time and take care of Dunyarzad for me. Yep, now we're talking. All right, let's let's see what happens when we do that instead. Where is Nahida? I'm done. Here you go. What? Isn't this just an Akasha terminal? I made some little changes. Akasha terminals are already capable of sending messages. I just tweaked it so that it could connect to any node. 
To make something like okay. this? Nahida, you really know the Akasha like the back of your hand. Anyway, we can use this now to record a message, right? Yep. <laughs> I'll help you save the messages. It should be pretty easy to use. I just can't guarantee the user's status and signal coverage when they're outside the city. We'll okay. never know until we try. At least we're taking the initiative now. Let's, Let's go to try. Then. Let's expose those sages! I still think you should stay. Uh, all right. Paimon isn't as worried about being separated since it happened once yesterday. But Paimon still isn't happy about it. Okay. Steve. See you tomorrow, traveler. All right. Let's see if this works. That covers everything that's happened so far. <sighs> yes. Although the signal was choppy and had some interference, we still managed to receive two messages from you when you were outside. Okay, okay. now that you understand what's going on, let's hear the messages together. Okay, let's do it. Can't go back. There are countless spaces here. Our Sabzeru's festival in Sumeru City is just one of them. I've entered another space. Before me are flowing sandstone and howling fish. Impossible and surreal sights. All these spaces are empty. Except for the occasional ones that contain mute puppets rather than people. I can't sense any human presence. Okay. Interesting. What's up, Nahida? That's one heck of an info dump. It sounds like you left the Sumeru city space when you set foot outside of the walls. But... Everything looked completely normal when Paimon was looking out from the inside. That's unbelievable. And if we take your word for it, the other spaces all had very weird contents. There's another part here. We only received it last night. <sighs> These spaces have been disappearing, one after the other, absorbed by something like a sun in the sky. And now, even the final space has also disappeared. <sighs> Behind me, a lot of spaces just appeared again from thin air. I get it now. Those spaces are actually... What? Uh, uh, why did the message end right there? What did the traveler want to say? What are those spaces? Probably because yesterday just happened to end at that moment. Ah, oh, shoot. Oh, right. Paimon did hear a beep from the Akasha. Did it come from here or... From the message. The message. It should have come from the Traveler's Akasha Terminal. After the beep, Traveler said, even the final space has also disappeared. <sighs> Traveler, what do you think that final space could have been? All right, let's gotta do this again. I have my video up so I can get this right. My impression is that each day in this samsara only ends at the sound of that beep from the Akasha. After the sound of the beep, the final space, the Subzero's festival, also disappears, and we're taken to the next day. Later on, Traveler also mentioned a bunch of new spaces materializing behind them. Do lots of new spaces appear every day? Paimon's head is spinning. Just what are these spaces anyhow? Well, consider this. For all the horrors of the Archon War, at its heart, it was just a game where a bunch of gods fought over seven seats. So no matter how strange or spooky things may look on the surface, maybe all they point to in the end is a small and simple secret. Wow, the Archon War, huh? That's an analogy and a half. A secret, huh? Getting a little interesting. Give me some time. Hey, where are you going? Yeah, this is getting interesting. All right, so this illusion, y'all, is getting deep. We haven't even fought anybody. All right, I'll see y'all at our next destination. All right, let's clear our, get our darts together. Do you want some alone time to think? <sighs> All right then, Paimon won't disturb you. The dance of Subzeros is about to begin. I'm going to go watch it. Is that time Okay, on? um, why don't you go ahead, Dunyarzad? We still have some other stuff to do first. Okay then, I'll see you later. She seems even way tired of dancing. Have you before. figured it out yet, Traveler? Time is ticking away. I think I know the answer now. Awesome, what is it? Oh, wait, no. Let's meet up with Nahida first. You can tell us both together. This time, we're gonna get to the truth. Let's do it. I'll see y'all when we get there. All right. You're back. I've been waiting forever for you two. Judging by the looks on your faces, are you ready to take your Subzeru's exam and graduate from the festival? 
Ask away. <laughs> okay, first off, have you discovered the hidden truth? All right. People in Sumeru don't dream. What a strange phenomenon. All the bizarre spaces I saw outside the city had one thing in common, a lack of human presence. Those spaces remind me of dreams, like the one I had in the Avidia Forest, except these have no sign of human presence. <sighs> that doesn't sound right. Those spaces remind me of dreams. We are all in a dream. It isn't that the people of Sumeru don't dream. Rather, the Akasha is taking their dreams from them. Okay, I think I got it. People in Sumeru think they don't dream. But the truth is, the Akasha steals their dreams without them knowing it. And those spaces with no human presence are stolen dreams without their host. That would explain why they sounded so weird when she was trying to describe them. Huh. So people in Sumeru do dream after all. In fact, we're all in one big dream together right now! Correct answer. Now, how did you conclude that the Akasha is capable of this? Alright. It is the manifestation of the God of Wisdom's power. Oh, okay. Those dream-controlling creatures in the forest also get their power from the Dendro Archon, right? That would explain why the Akasha has the ability to control people's dreams, too. But is stealing everyone's dreams really how the Akasha compiles their wisdom? Isn't there anything more to it than that? Dreams are fantastical, complex, and full of imagination. People's brains are the most active when they're dreaming. In other words, dreams are rich bundles of human wisdom. So in other words, the complete opposite of how Hypatia understood it. Parma remembers her saying that the sages think dreams are foolish delusions, and the fact that no one dreams is a blessing from greater Lord Ruka Devada. Hmm. Hey. So it was all a dirty trick? The real story is that the sages from the academia are using the Akasha to steal people's dreams for their own use, huh? Yes, they don't intend to stop uh -huh. there. By the sounds of it, you understand the current situation pretty well. So then, what about the samsara? All right, let's do this one. Those spaces kept disappearing before my eyes, but as soon as that beep sounded, many more spaces materialized. Those dreamscapes kept vanishing, but as soon as that beep sounded, more new spaces appeared. We've already experienced the Sabzeru's festival many times, and the day of the festival seems to be in a perpetual samsara. <sighs> that doesn't sound right. Correct. The Akasha is keeping each person's brain in a constant dream state, but also separating their consciousness from their own dream. Hmm. Their disembodied consciousness is placed inside the collective dream of the Sabzeru's festival along with everyone else's while their now vacant dreams are harvested by the Akasha. No one is any the wiser as another day passes in the dream, and so begins another samsara cycle. People wake up to yet another dream about the Sabzeru's festival. The dreams that belong to them are once again harvested by the Akasha, and so it continues. Wow, this is crazy. So, this is like a dream factory, and the Akasha is a dream harvesting machine! Did Paimon get that analogy right? <laughs> Very good, Paimon. Using analogies well is an excellent habit to get into. Okay, so that beep we keep hearing is actually from our real-life Akasha terminals. Taking off our terminals in this dream doesn't do anything. All right, last question. Who am I? Oh, gosh. They say that alchemical divination is the Dendro Archon's divine revelation. So then, if Nahida has referred to herself as the moon... <laughs> so you noticed. You are the... Oh my uh, gosh. I thought that one would be the hardest question. I That's knew why it. I last. That wasn't hard at all. Even Paimon guessed that. Everything about you is different. We just didn't want to expose you is all. Now that you mention it, Nahida... You've been hinting to us since the very beginning. It's funny, thinking back to when we were asking all over the place for info about Lesser Lord Kusanali. Paimon didn't expect to meet you like this. Yes, those can wait until we're back in real life. <laughs> I know, On right? the other hand, I'd be happy to answer any more questions you have about here and now. All right, let's do it. Let's do the first one. Why can we? Why can you simply tell us the truth? You asked me this question before. 
My answer was, it would literally blow your minds. Now that you know this is all a dream, this answer should hopefully make more sense. Have you heard the saying, don't wake a sleepwalker? Likewise, if someone suddenly had told you all this, instead of you learning it on your own, your notion of reality and dream would be thrown into irreversible confusion. I couldn't expose you to that kind of risk. That's why I could only give you very subtle hints and some suggestions. Long story short, I'm really sorry I had to keep you guessing. That's okay. Alright, let's do... Uh, how does the sages manage to keep people from those things? Firstly, sinners? this dream we're in is completely based on reality. People have already experienced this sub festival, so it would be very difficult for them to find anything that strikes them as surreal. Secondly, you're probably wondering why people don't have any memories from earlier samsara, right? That's because people don't remember their dreams most of the time anyway. And in any case, their actual dreams are being taken away from them by the Akasha. So whenever they wake up in this dream of the sub festival, they don't remember anything from their previous identical dream. Never mind Simon. Traveler had a dream when we were in the Avidia Forest, but couldn't see what it was about after waking up. Is that an example of what you mean? Yes. Only after receiving the blessing of Dendro can a person gain the Dendro element's dream-enhancing power. Mm. That explains the feelings of deja vu. Okay. Meanwhile, everyone else has no idea that they are in the sub Festival Samsara, while their dreams are stolen from them over and over again. Okay. Next one. About the side effects of the mass-produced dream. Can humans really keep dreaming forever like this? Will it ever end? And if so, when? You might say your mental fatigue has already answered this question. Eventually, there's only so much that people can tolerate. Especially those whose health is compromised to begin with. Like Dunyarzad. This relentless exploitation takes an even harder toll on them. People's lives are at stake here, and nobody knows a thing! We've gotta put a stop to this! True. Why is the dream about... Yeah. I know, right? Why did they have to base this dream on my birthday? Could it really just be a coincidence? Well, from what I heard people around the block on the last episode, some folks don't like you. Even you don't know the reason? Wow. Now that's strange. The Academia Sages are determined to harvest lots of dreams in a short time, no matter the cost. They have to be up to no good. Unfortunately, I don't know anything about it. Traveler, do you have any information? Grand Sage said, go celebrate the birth of that god to your heart's content. <sighs> Did he mean something more? Okay, Nahida said, the Akasha relies on the power of a Gnosis to operate. As it is the manifestation of the god of wisdom's power, it compiles the wisdom of the entire populace and it grants knowledge to the people. It didn't show me the last one, because there's literally, like, this is the last one. Oh, man. I remember the Grand Sage's speech. Celebrate the birth of that god? Could it mean? Deceiving the people of Samara with no regard for their safety. No matter what they're trying to do, this is unforgivable. Okay, so I'm glad I picked the last After one. After we end the sub Festival, Samsara, we have to look into them. How can the sages of the Academia do this behind their Archon's back? This is ridiculous! In the end, I'm just the moon. The real sun is long gone. A sun and a moon? <sighs> Nahida's talking in riddles again. Oh, it's happening. Oh, we're out of time today. I'll tell you how to break free of the samsara tomorrow. See you then. All right. We'll see her tomorrow. Good morning, Nahida. Uh, wait, now that Paimon remembers everything, should we instead say good morning, Lesser Lord Kusanali? <sighs> what? Hey, what's wrong, Nahida? You don't look too good. I'm afraid that what you're thinking right now is correct. Did Dunyarzad already disappear? No way. Are, are we too late? The real Dunyarzad's consciousness has indeed disappeared. No! It can no longer endure the constant dream harvesting. Paimon can't believe it. Wait, 
So what about that other Dunyarzad? Just what is she? Is she also going to disappear? She's actually something like a puppet, but not completely. The real Dunyarzad's consciousness could no longer keep playing her role in this dream. So another Dunyarzad appeared to replace her in the dream. Just like the grass and the trees, that Dunyarzad is just a building block of the dream that helps to keep it going. But personality-wise, she's nothing like the real Dunyarzad. Nope. Puppets are stiff and can't copy a living person's vitality. After all, they're just their filler. And you know, speaking of which, the old Dunyarzad might not have been too different from a puppet. Oh. Dunyarzad truly believed that she met you within her consciousness, and it was you who inspired her. So you do remember her after all. Yes. Back then, her family was overly protective of her. No one cared about her personality or thoughts. It was as if she only lived to stall her Elazar. I just gave her a little wisdom so she could look at life in a new way. So that she could be her own person. But even so, she still... Still meant a lot to her. Far from it. I'm still a long way off from being a real Archon. I couldn't Don't even say that. Her. If I were a competent Archon, I wouldn't have let my most faithful follower die at the Subzerus Festival with so many regrets. Please don't beat yourself up over it, Nahida. It's the Sage's fault, and theirs alone! I... I'm not beating myself up. All I did was to rationally observe the distance between myself and a real Archon. Don't be like that, Nahida. Even real Archons are still allowed to be sad. Yeah. To prevent more tragedies like this, we must end the Samsara as soon as possible. Great, but how do we do that? Although the Subzerus Festival dream is under the Akasha's control, only humans can dream. Even the Akasha is unable to create them. That means this dream belongs to a host who created it. Okay. Huh? So, how should we find that person? Well, if this is someone's dream, then everything here must come from deep within their consciousness. Which means, with the power of imagination, they can change anything in this dream. Imagination? What do you mean by that? Imagination means breaking through what you perceive as normal. Like when a server at a tavern brings a plate to you, you naturally assume that food is on it. However, if you're the dream's host and you become aware that you're dreaming, when you imagine gold and more on the plate, the dream will respond in kind. And the server really will bring you gold and mora. But right now, our host is unaware that this is a dream. No matter how many times they're served, it will always be food. Hmm. So we find the host, then what? Find some way to make that person realize that they're dreaming. Usually, once that happens, the person will wake up and the dream samsara will be broken. How are we going to find them, though? If it could be anyone, it'd be like looking for a needle in a haystack. And even if we did find them, how are we supposed to make them realize they're dreaming? After all, like you said, don't wake a sleepwalker. It's extremely difficult, yes. But the only ones who can do it are you two. Remember, everything you've achieved up to this point has all been for the sake of finding the host and ending the samsara. I As wonder who it me, is. Uh, during this time... I'll be out of town. Out of town? Are you going to that place full of dreams where the Traveler went? Yes. I, I want to try something. There must still be a small wisp of possibility. Hurry and go. Dreams are supposed to be fantastical, romantic, and full of pleasant surprises. Unnecessary things like this, Samsara, need to end. Huh. <sighs> Paimon's still a little upset that we've come this far only for Dunyarzad to... She was such a good person, with such a simple wish, but fate was against her. I do, yeah. I feel so crazy. Saving Dunyarzad is what kept us going this whole time. But we mustn't lose hope, Traveler. Dunyarzad would definitely want to see us save everyone else. So let's break the Samsara for her sake. Paimon's wondering... Let's do it. Do you think the Sages would get one of their own to be the host of this dream? Feels like it would be easier to control it that way, no? Unlikely. I know the plan. They probably become they probably become aware of what they're dreaming. But the host would be less likely to realize it. Huh. 
that's true. No. Plus, the sages probably weren't counting on there being other factors beyond their control. Like Nahida and us. So, who do you think the host of the dream is? I don't know. Oh, that would make sense. Ferris, the Knight of Flowers, is a symbol of the wholesome Zerus Festival, right? Pretty core character. Let's go ask him some questions, shall we? Ooh, let's do it. I hope I'm right. All right, y'all. I'll see y'all when we get there. All right, we're here. Hmm, you're back. You left in a hurry last time. I is everything okay? Everything's fine. Just, um, it's a little hard to explain. Uh, would you mind taking part in a little experiment with us? An experiment? That came out of nowhere. I'm listening, though. What do you need me to do? Could you? Make a wish? You want me to make a wish? Is that a new sub Zerus festival tradition or something? Let's go just a... for wishing! Okay. Okay. My wish. My wish. Um, okay. I'm a little nervous saying this out loud, but I want Miss Dunyarzad to be happy. Oh. I noticed earlier that she looked a bit down, and she wasn't really talking to anyone. She just doesn't seem like herself. She's always so gentle and kind, and all the kids love her. I've also wondered if the reason she asked me to be Ferris Knight of Flowers is because I'm special to her, or something. So, Aww. you have a crush on Dunyarzad? Uh, <laughs> uh, is it that obvious? After what I just said, I guess it is. When she placed the hat of the Knight of Flowers onto my head, she said to me, I want everyone to have a happy sub -Zerus festival. What she didn't realize was that I'm not that interested in how everyone else feels. In that moment, I just wanted to be her knight of flowers for the rest of my life. Fifty years, a hundred years, I'll serve her till the end of time. Aww. Okay, yeah, that was a bit much. Felt like the right moment to get it off my chest, but <clears throat> that was pretty embarrassing. Okay, I'm ready to make my wish. I would like Miss Dunyarzad to appear in front of me right now with a smile on her face. Here goes. Please come true. I'm gonna open my eyes. Oh. Uh. Oh. You're... What? Fucky. Uh, sorry, but only one portion of Yelda candies per person. Back home you go. <laughs> uh, nice try, you two. Anyway, never mind. I don't need to see her appear right in front of me. As long as she's happy. <laughs> uh, guess he isn't the host of this dream after all. Should have expected it wouldn't be this easy. Yeah, let's see who else. The other two guys are still here too. It would be funny if she came walking smiling. It seems like everyone who knows Dunyarzad loves her. None of them has any idea that she... My lady, step back. That sounds like Tia! Oh, right. This is when Dunyarzad bumps into the kidnappers. Huh? But Dia can handle them. Hey, Traveler! What if Dia is it? They made Dia. <gasps> oh. I'll see y'all when we get there. Oh, it's you. Great timing. Please take... Hey, this is my job. The homie Yanni's pay me, not you. You... Ugh. Fine, all right, knock yourself out. Why are you so worked up anyway? It's not like I don't trust your fighting skills. Anyway, watch yourself. All right. So you got yourself some backup. <laughs> Suit yourself. You're going down. We really gotta fight these guys. <laughs> don't get frostbite. Cool it. Ah, you want this one. <laughs> I'll be back. All right. We did something different this time. We got into a fight. Traveler, were you just taking your anger out on those guys? I'm fine. You and Nahida both. Dunyarzad wouldn't want to see you two like this. I know. Oh, and speaking of her, 
Paimon just remembered something. Remember how during the first Sub-Zero's festival, before the Samsara started, we came here with Dunyarzad because she wanted to pick something up? She said it was because she had forgotten something. Okay, so Paimon's memory is working so far. Anyway, Paimon also remembers that she is staying somewhere around here. She pointed it out to us the night before the Sub-Zero's festival. Yeah, give you some clues. even if it's only a tiny clue, it'll probably still help us more than this needle in a haystack search. Okay, let's see what happens. I know I gotta this end the episode. Place. It's rude to enter other people's spaces without permission, but desperate times call for desperate measures. Hey, the windows are unlocked. Okay, uh, Paimon's gonna take a peek inside. Enter the room and returns a while later carrying something. This was only a temporary residence, so there was pretty much nothing inside except this book on the table. Should we open it? Let's do it. Almost 16 days, I was finally able to get these notes written before the Samaru's festival. Once the festival ends, you and Paimon will probably continue your journey immediately. So I was hoping that I'd be able to give this to you before that. This is the uh, contemplation of folks of folk legends concerning Leisure Lord Kusanali. Created from the series of interviews that I conducted in succession and wrote down. I interviewed so many people that I'm afraid that there are very few who have much about her. Still, I hope that this will be for use of use to you in your search for her. All right. Gunharvaville's water supply was once contaminated, forcing everyone to go very far out to get water. But one day, people suddenly found that the water was drink was drinkable again, and some said that the green light was seen near the water source the previous night. Everyone believes that this was the divine power of Leisure Lord Kusanali at work. This sounds quite possible. Decontamination of water sources via natural means probably uh, probably takes ages. The leisure, the leisure Lord Kusanali appeared in uh, Gianharvaville Den. After Mama passed away, I was super afraid of the dark and couldn't sleep. But from one day, but from one day on, I would hear a voice that would chat with me till I fell asleep. A nice lady told me that Lord Kusanali must have been watching over me. Poor child. I hope that's a, or I hope that the Sabarus Festival makes him a little happier. This is quite similar to something I experienced back then as well. She is indeed a gentle god. Okay, this is close to the last one. There was this one time when I had to wee had a wee bit too much to drink and couldn't find my way home to save my life. Then when I turned a corner, I could have sworn I saw Laura Kusanali. She was very tall and had the most muscular arms. She caught me when I slipped and fell. The next morning, I found myself sleeping under a tree. I reckon that must have been her looking out for me. I'm not sure this one has to has that much value as a reference. That was probably just a tree, right? These folk records, appended with Junior Jar's references and opinions, leave every page densely packed. Okay. Wow, Junior Zard wrote all of this. Sounds like she was always thinking of us even while we were away. Even though she was also busy preparing for the Subzeru's festival and had all her health problems to worry about. She must have wanted to give this to us as a gift on the day of the Subzeru's festival, right? If we hadn't found this book, we never would have known. But now that we know, we can't even thank her. Junior's are. Hey, where are you off to now? Maybe she's it. All right. I'll see y'all when we get there. We, I think it's Dunyar's art. All right, we made it. It's Dunyar's art's puppet. Yep. Okay, let's do it. Traveler, you must be exhausted. Come to think of it, we've been stuck in this place for a really, really long time. Heck, even the last time we were chatting happily with Dunyar's art feels like an eternity ago. Aww. Memories. Paimon still remembers when we were sitting here. And the way her eyes sparkled when she talked about Nilu's dance of Subzeru's. There will always be frustrations in life. But I know that the point of living is not to leave behind any regrets. Huh? That was what the real Dunyarzad said, wasn't it? Does that mean... Dunyarzad? Yes, Traveler. What is it? Oh, so she's still just a puppet. But just now, how come... Not leave behind any What? Threat? Where are we going this time? I 
think it's her. I'm not sure. This is getting interesting. Oh, I'll see y'all when we get there. I want to finish. I can end the episode, but it's getting so good. I can't help myself. All right, we made it. If you continue to resist, we will have to order an investigation into every single event organizer. The Grand Sage has already granted you much leniency. I advise that you exercise tact. How, how did things turn out like this? Let's see what happens. What if we intervene this time? Uh, Traveler? Uh, you don't have to get involved. He's a sage from the Academia. I don't want to drag you into this. Traveler? Traveler? What the heck are you doing? If you get arrested by the Academia, that's another day gone to waste. I think he knows. Wait, they're not reacting. Have they been scared stiff? Just oh, like I thought. Of course. If this is the sage's plan, they wouldn't put themselves through this. So they're just substitutes. What is this? What happened to the Grand Sage and his entourage? Aha! <laughs> like I said, they symbolize the Goddess of Flowers. It's just a shame that all the real Bodhisaras went extinct after her death. Yes. The Greater Lord brought forth new Bodhisaras in memory of the Goddess of Flowers. But she ultimately could never truly replicate that beautiful shade of purple. Okay, the flowers. Ah, that beautiful shade of purple. Aren't these flowers real Padisaras? Just like the ones from the legend? I didn't even notice. Tanyarzad, did you find these? But didn't you just say all the real flowers went extinct after the goddess of flowers passed away? So, Al? Yeah. What's going on here? Neela, close your eyes. Uh, uh huh? Imagine that the Grand Sage and his entourage are not here. F you oh. guys are acting weird. It's Nilo. But okay, I'll try. Hmm. Hey! They disappeared! So Nilo's the host! What a surprise! Purple body Saras don't exist in the real world anymore! But in Nilu's subconscious, they can appear as decorations on the stage. It's just like the example Nahida told us. People assumed there will be food on a plate, and Nilu assumed there would be real Padisaras in the flower pots. So when you saw the flowers, you instantly knew it was Nilu? Yep. But if we want to end the samsara, we need the host to become aware that they're dreaming. How should we make Nilu realize that? Am I dreaming? Huh? <laughs> so I'm right. Is this Lesser Lord Kusanali responding to our celebration of the Sabzeru's festival? Wrong guess, but you aren't completely wrong either. Uh, the point is, what made you think this is a dream? As far as you know, people in Sumeru don't dream, right? Yeah, but have you heard the tale of the first sage? To prevent a calamity, he went on a journey to find the Dendro Archon. Ooh, sounds familiar. Dinyarzad told us a story like that when we first arrived in Sumeru City. So, it was about the first sage, huh? Yep, but in the part you heard, he hadn't become the first sage yet. There's more to the story. His piety and wisdom were acknowledged by the Dendro Archon, and she finally gave her blessing to him. All kinds of spectacular scenes appeared in front of the first sage. As if all the knowledge in the world was being painted onto a canvas right before him. He was captivated. After who knows how long, he mastered all the knowledge he could comprehend. Afterward, he said to the Dendro Archon, I miss my parents, my wife, and my children. I've been away from home for far too long. They must be worried. The Dendro Archon smiled. The next second, the sage found himself lying in his bed, as if he had just woken up from a dream. His wife, lying next to him, said, You're off to search for the Dendro Archon today, aren't you? Hmm. Have a safe journey, my love. In the end, the First Sage took care of many disasters in Sumeru City and founded the Academia. <sighs> what a happy ending. So, the First Sage was dreaming ever since the beginning of the story? He never went on his journey? Yes. But his faith and determination were conveyed to the Dendro Archon, so she blessed him in the form of a dream. Huh. This is getting interesting. Paimon understands where you're coming from now. 
That's a really interesting connection. But we really gotta wake up soon. Like the sage in the story. Now that Neela is aware of it. I see. Well, it just so happens that today's Sub Zero's festival is almost over, too. I wonder if she does a dance, maybe that'll break it. Since we're in a dream, let's make this final dance of Sub Zero's as beautiful as we can. Yeah, let's do it. Let's see what happens when she does it. Dedicate this to our god, the dance of Sub Zerus. This is crazy. I'd be lying if I said I had no regrets. I would have loved to see Nilo's dance. <gasps> She's here! Oh my gosh! <sighs> I'm trying not to cry! It was so beautiful, so touchy. Ah, oh, good morning, traveler. Oh, my mom feels like she's been asleep for the longest time. Good morning. My mom's head feels super heavy. Did we oversleep? Do you even remember going to sleep last night? My mom thinks it was after the Sub Zero's festival. The Sub Zero's festival. Have we finally escaped from the Sub Zero Samsara? I remember Quinn, now. Take off your Akasha terminal. Let's see. Let's see what happens. She's not in her room. What happened? Let's go to the, the huh? usual spot. What usual spot? Oh gosh. How about you forgot? Alright, let's go to the usual spot. Let's see what happens now. <gasps> She's here! Well done, Traveler and Paimon. And thank you, Dunyarzad, for organizing the Sub Zero's festival for me. I'm sorry, who are. Dunyarzad! <laughs> You're okay! Oh, don't scare us like that! Oh, a traveler, Paimon. I have something amazing to tell you. What? I just had a dream. And I saw Nilu performing the dance of Sub Zero's. Yeah, we were there. I think we finished. Oh my gosh. That was crazy. Crazy, 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 crazy. Oh my gosh. I think this is where I'm going to end the episode and we're just going to have to just go to the next one and talk to Catherine in the next episode because that was insane. Insane. Oh, wow. The deja vu. OMG. We only, there was only one fight and I think I kind of wanted to do the fight because I was like, I'm, I've been in the storyline. I need a fighting scene. So I, yeah, I'm glad I did it. But I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode today. We completed the deja vu. We got to see Nilu dance. She did great. Anyway, like I said, we saw Nilu dance. We broke the cycle. I mean, it's the next day. Dunyar Zard is here and alive and well. Now I feel like we're going to be fighting some people. We're going to figure out what's going on. Why would you have this in this deja vu dream? We got to know what's happening because anybody got time. But that'll be on the next episode. So hope you guys enjoy. Make sure you like and subscribe. Comment down below. You guys have finished this quest because I need to know. Did, like, did, did y'all finish it? And how many times you guys had to redo this deja vu thing? All right. See you guys later on the next one. Bye, guys. Yeah.